Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at a brand new preprint that tackles an interesting question in the world of resistance training. Do warm up sets actually help improve your performance in a lifting session? So the paper we're reviewing today is titled Warming Up to Improved Performance, Effects on Different Specific Warm-Up Protocols on Neuromuscular Performance in Trained Individuals. And this study is by Ennis and colleagues. Now, we all know warm-ups are a standard part of resistance training routines. And the idea is simple. Get the muscles primed, increased in temperature and blood flow, and mentally prepare for your working sets. In general, people warm up to reduce injury, and this seems like a no-brainer for most of us. But here is what the authors of this paper were more focused on. They point out that warm-ups, especially short, light ones, may not actually improve your performance, at least not in trained lifters performing multiple sets to failure. To quote the authors, the general recommendation for warming up before a resistance training session is based on physiological effects such as increased body and muscle temperature, enhanced blood flow to the working muscles, improved neural drive, for example, increased action potential conduction rate, reduced muscle stiffness, and augmented metabolic efficiency, which is basically just oxygen and substrate delivery to the muscles. Interestingly, the subsequent sentence suggests that these physiological alterations are collectively theorized to improve resistance training session performance, especially for strength and power outcomes. Now, it's very important to note that the authors are not speaking on injury prevention in the present study. Instead, they are focusing on performance when performing resistance exercise. Specifically, the authors set out to answer the following question. Does the number of warm-up sets or the weight used in those sets actually affect performance during a resistance training session? Specifically, the authors were curious if you can skip the warm-up and save time without sacrificing reps, volume, or strength. To figure this out, the researchers tested different specific warm-up protocols before upper and lower body training in trained men and women. And the results? Well, they might surprise you. So let's break down what they did. We'll take a look at the methods. So how did the researchers actually test the impact of warm-ups? Well, they used a randomized crossover design, which basically means every participant tried all three conditions in a randomized order with at least 48 hours of rest between sessions. They recruited 29 resistance trained adults, both men and women, with an average of about four and a half years of lifting experience. Everyone had to be experienced with the bench press and the leg press, or at least for four weeks, which were the two exercises used in this study. So what were the warm up conditions? Well, participants came into the lab on different days and performed one of these three conditions before their working sets. First was the no warm up condition or the control. So during this condition, the participants went straight into their working sets. The second group was the one set condition, and these folks performed one warm up set of three to four reps at around 75% of their 10 rep max. And the third group was the two set condition, and they performed two warm up sets. Three to four of these reps were performed at 55% of their 10 rep max, then another three to four reps at 75% of their 10 rep max. After the warm up or no warm up, all participants did four sets to failure at their 10 rep max load for both the bench press and leg press, with two minute rest intervals between sets. The warm ups were designed to be brief and not fatiguing, and the participants were told to stop as soon as they felt ready and avoid pushing to effort or failure. So what did they measure? Well, the researchers tracked the following. Repetition performance, which was the total number of reps completed across the four sets. Volume load, which was the weight times the reps times the sets. A fatigue index, which is how much performance dropped from the first to the last set. Perceived exertion or RPE, which is how hard each set felt. And lastly, exercise readiness, which is how prepared the participant felt before the workout. They also monitored sleepiness and tried to keep diet, music and rest consistent across each session to avoid confounding results. So with all this data, what did they find? Let's dive in and take a look at the results. So overall, the authors found that there was no meaningful benefit to doing a specific warm up before lifting when it came to performance. That's right. When comparing the no warm up group, the one set warm up group and the two set warm up protocols, the differences in performance were negligible to small and often not in the direction that you'd expect. So let's first take a look at the bench press. When looking at reps performed, the authors observed slightly fewer reps in the warm-up conditions compared to the no warm-up group. 
When examining volume load, the authors observed practically the same results across all three conditions. For fatigue index, there was no clear advantage for either warm-up strategy. Fatigue levels were similar whether participants warmed up or not. The statistical chances that warm-ups helped were low across the board, and the evidence strongly supported the idea that there wasn't any benefit to doing more sets. Now let's take a look at the leg press. The results here were very neutral. The two-set warm-up might have had a slight edge for reps performed, but the effect was small and uncertain. For fatigue and volume load, the results again showed no clear advantage with warm-ups. The evidence for a dose-response effect, meaning more warm-ups equaled better performance, was weak or completely unsupported. Now, what about perception? Well, rate of perceived exertion was pretty much the same across all conditions. And readiness to train was also similar. So whether participants warmed up or not, they felt equally prepared going into their working sets. Now, did strength level matter? So you might be wondering, did stronger lifters benefit from more warm-ups? Well, the researchers examined this and found no significant interaction between strength level and the effectiveness of warm-up sets. So the bottom line is, no matter how they sliced the data, reps, fatigue, volume, and perception, there was no consistent advantage to doing one or two warm-up sets before working out at a 10 rep max load. So let's move on and talk about what this actually means and why it may or may not change how you warm up in the gym. If you're training with moderate loads, like your 10 rep max, doing warm-up sets may not improve your performance. In fact, skipping the warm-up didn't hurt performance either. That means, at least for trained lifters, doing multiple sets to failure, the warm-up might not be as necessary as we've all been told. But this is strictly in the context of performance. And let's unpack why this matters. This paper was focused on performance only, and the authors pitched the results as a way to save time in the gym. In fact, the last paragraph of the paper reads as follows. Given that lack of time is one of the principal barriers to resistance training adherence, coaches and practitioners with time constraints do not necessarily need to employ single warm-up sets when training with 10 rep max loads, thus saving around two to five minutes per exercise. Nonetheless, given that our study did not show any detriments to performing a single warm-up, its implementation should be considered on an individual basis, especially for those with time constraints who objectively or perceptually feel the strategy better prepares them for their working sets. Nonetheless, given that our study did not show any detriments to performing a warm-up, its implementation should be considered on an individual basis, especially for those without time constraints who objectively or perceptually feel the strategy better prepares them for their working set. Also, check out the messaging being shared across social media. For example, one influencer posts, no warm-up, no problem. For many people, no warm-up can potentially be a big problem. And you can also see that many folks in the comments section were very quick to point out that they warm up for injury prevention and not necessarily for performance. The authors also point out that when performing moderate loads, that the first few reps might be your real warm-up when training at moderate rep ranges like 8 to 12 reps per set. The first few reps of your working sets may already serve as a functional warm-up. Now, if you look at the warm-ups performed in the present study, it seems possible that they were simply too little to provide any benefit. So it seems reasonable to suggest that all three groups in this study were still warming up during their first sets of exercise. Their most rigorous warm-up was three to four reps at 55% of 10 rep max, then three to four reps at 75% of their 10 rep max. Therefore, six to eight total reps may simply not be enough. So what are my final thoughts? Well, this study focused on trained individuals doing moderate load and multi-set training. It doesn't apply to high intensity training like a one to three rep max, explosive movements or untrained beginners. And more importantly, it doesn't tell us anything about injury prevention. This study was purely just about performance. Just because no one was injured in this study does not mean that the participants were not at a higher risk for injury during their exercise sessions with no or little warm up. So if you're lifting heavy, going for max velocity, or you're new to training or any body lifting weights, a warm-up might still be important for safety and motor learning. 
So let's bring this all together. This study tested whether doing one or two low repetition warm up sets before training would improve performance in trained lifters doing multiple sets at their 10 rep max. And the answer? Not really. Performance was nearly identical with and without a warm up. Fatigue, reps, and volume load didn't improve with warm ups. Even perceived effort and readiness stayed the same across all conditions. And more warm up sets didn't help either. There was no clear benefit to doing two sets versus one. In my observation, the messaging on social media has been rather inflammatory and simply suggests that no warm ups is no problem. But that all needs context. Warmer muscles are more pliable, allowing for greater range of motion and tissue extensibility. This reduces the likeliness of strains or tears, especially during explosive and dynamic movements. Now, sure, the likelihood of injury during moderate load training may be less, but it's certainly not zero. So I'm curious, who here watching warms up before training? And if so, why do you warm up? Let me know in the comment section below. Now, for more detail about one-on-one coaching, my evidence-based workout at Be A Fit, my educational guide or research review, please take a look in the links in the description below, and I'll catch you in my next video.